Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Guess where we are? Where's my finger? Right there. Where are we? Everybody Tom? recognizes that. Yeah. We're at Squash Blossom Farms. Yes, woohoo, in Northwest Rochester. We are here this morning to talk about plant biodiversity and habitat destruction. It's a bad thing. And look at us. We are, who are we? We are Grant Woods American Gothic. Well, no, as good as it ex gets. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Wait a exactly. second. I'm not supposed to have a hat on. No. <laughs> I don't have. <laughs> you have an apron right. on, though. You should have a wig to play the girl. I, I got the overalls <laughs> on for the guy. Yeah, she didn't want to take her hair down that much, and yeah. um, I don't have a little jacket to use. But anyway, so we're going to, I think she's trying to make me a farmer, but we'll see if that works. We'll get, we'll get on that. <laughs> so we're out here at Squash Blossom Farm, and we're going to kind of take a walk, and we're going to have a cameo with Susan Waftal and Roger Nelson, the owners of Squash Blossom Farm, and we're going to talk a little bit about <laughs> um, a planting that we're going to have going on this weekend. So Tom... Show us your excellent camera flipping skills and let's walk over let's to the habitat. Let's walk over there. Let's do this. Let okay. me take this pitchfork yes. before you okay. hurt someone. <laughs> yes, okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. And I'm going to flip it. You got the it. camera flipped? Yeah, um, I got it flipped. Yep, okay, here we go. Let's start walking. So did you do your research on Squash Blossom Farm, Tom? <sighs> yeah, so squash is a uh, dioecious. Dioecious blossom. Dioecious blossom. Yeah. It has male yeah. and female flowers. Yeah. And you can so, you can kind of tell which one's a female because it's got a little lump, little where the the, 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 oh, the swollen the swollen, swollen part, ovary the part, the blossom, yep. yep, where the where the ovaries are, yeah, yep. the ovules that hold the eggs for the flower, and the male stem is just strong and skinny, yeah. And can you eat both of the blossoms, Tom? Um. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, here. this is nice. Here's our lovely house here um, on the farmstead. So complimentary color theme going between the pickets and the house. <laughs> this is a great place. They host events out here in the summertime. They've oh, got an event great going pizza. on this weekend. Great pizza. Great pizza. And they've got mead coming. They've uh, been redoing their barn. And follow. you can follow the construction on their Facebook page. So if you have meads, that means you have bees, right? And this... Uh, Look at those lovely bee skeps there. Now, how come they're not white? I don't know. <laughs> But that's nice. So, yes. So this is where the meat all starts. Okay. So can everybody see how the trees have been cut down here? And we've got a construction vehicle over. What am I doing here? Okay. Oh, I just got to try to reconnect. Okay. Um, so how's your Wi-Fi here? <laughs> okay. So, so we're going to be doing a planting here on Sunday um, in the afternoon. I think one to three-ish or whatever. One to three, yep. And then we'll, have, we'll be treated by some pizza as well. Yep, you can find the event posted on Backyard Bounty Urban Homesteaders. You can also find the event. We're going to go ahead and post an event on the University of Minnesota Extension Olmsted County Master Gardeners. And I believe Transition Rochester also has the event posted. So what um, Susan and Roger have done is they've gotten a lot of shrubs, natives, from, uh, is it Mauer County? Yeah, Mauer County, Mauer County Soil yeah. and Water Conservation District, because our conservation districts, own the, uh, the counties around the state, do plant sales every year, and you can order them, which is an awesome feature of some of our county funding that we have. So they've chosen natives, plants that will help to ease the erosion issue, but also put back plant biodiversity because their blossoms offer pollen for pollinator health. Um, you're a beer brewer. They brew mead and wine and just and do boy, all I'll kinds tell you, of mead baking is something I got to cool sip. It, I love mead, but it's it's a sipper. I mean, I, it's, I, I, probably, I probably can't have any. Can't, it's pretty. It gets pretty strong. A lot of sugar in that. So yeah. So should we uh, talk yes, to Susan and you Roger? Yes. You know what? We've been talking enough. Let's see what uh, Susan and Roger want to say. So let's see. I'll get this uh, flipped around here. And just be at ease. You don't have to be as dorky as we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. It's Roger and Susan. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, yeah, Squash what's Blossom going on? Farms. Squash what's Blossom going? Farm, and why are you guys out here? Uh, we moved here in 2008. Our dream, our life, my lifelong dream since I was a little kid to have a little farm. And uh, we finally, finally did it in our old age. And we became, whoop, whoop. became farmers <laughs> in our 50s. Um, and we didn't really plan to be quite as intensive as we are, but this things way, just happened. Um, we... Uh, have, we have a lot of animals, and we have, uh, so we've, right now we have donkeys, goats, chickens, geese, ducks, guineas, an aquaponic system with um, catfish and koi, and uh, we've had cows in the past, but since they expanded the road, we had to get rid of the cows. Yeah. We just had to turn that into park, our pasture into park. And you have like 10 acres here? Just 
And right, okay. Of what was once a 200 acre farm. So, you know, it used to be a, a serious dairy farm in the long ago times. Yep. It hadn't been farmed for many years when we moved here, and there were no gardens anywhere. Yep. Not even any really uh, perennial planting, but for a couple of peonies. <laughs> so, you kept the house, the farmhouse, yeah. and then you've got. Uh, the outdoors, ever barn. since we moved here, we've been restoring buildings. We still have a couple to go. Um, Including a kitchen, right, Roger? Yeah. Yep. So tell us about all those awesome things you do in your commercial kitchen and where do you go with what comes out of your commercial kitchen? Well, we do um, a lot of baking. We have a big wood fired oven that's about six feet in diameter, and so I do some 60 to 100 loaves of sourdough bread a week. Um, some of that goes to the People's Food Co op, and others go to the farmer's market, or just your farmer's market. Uh, sourdough is my favorite, I just love it. Yeah. And a lot of other baking. <laughs> yep. uh, Pies and that kind of stuff. So that's the baking aspect of it. Uh, in the summertime on Sunday afternoons, we have pizza on the farm. So we have music from four o'clock to six o'clock. Um, uh, live music and surf, uh, wood fired sourdough, sourdough pizza. So that's, that's another aspect. And then just recently, we've gotten through all the regulatory, almost all of the regulatory <laughs> rigmarole and uh, are creating uh, honey wine, wine made from honey it's called mead. And ours is pretty dry. It's pretty dry <laughs> mead, okay. Yeah. Yep. Into this really sweet mead. Yeah. And uh, Susan, you're an artist as well, right? I'm an artist, yep. Yeah. So our home machine here is local food, local art, local music. So um, back in our high school days, we used to go cross country skiing and then go up for hot chocolate and talk about our dream utopian life would be <laughs> centered on um, farming, food, music, and art. And here in our old age, it's wonderful. Yay, long time coming. So tell me, tell me you've read Ernest Collingbach's The Pequotopia. No. Not yet. Oh my God, it's really good. The prequel is Ecotopia emerging, but the, the sequel, which is the more popular book, Ernest Collenbach, Utopia. It's a pretty awesome book. Yeah. Pretty I just forgot to mention one thing we're doing to um, Bean to Bar Chocolate. Our, our daughters yeah, I saw that, okay. With we, we farmers who grow cocoa beans in Costa Rica, so we get our beans from them. It's a an indigenous culture, indigenous tribe. So we get the beans from them already fermented and then roasted in the dry oven. And, and so I kind of consider this, I mean, this is kind of what we what's talked about is agri tourism. This is agri tourism. This is right big time. You got right music, right food, right art. Right yeah. Yep. Yes. yes. I mean, it's a big deal. So it is a big deal. Do you know that Southeast Minnesota has put more small farms on the land? than any other spot in the state of Minnesota, I believe. I did not know that. Growing. Yeah, we are growing. And the average age of the farmer, you guys came into it at just the right time. It's mid to upper 50s. That's the average age of a farmer. So what are we going to do in 10 years? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to cover <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. This is retirement. Well, it's a retirement life, right? It's yeah. a retirement life. So. Yeah. All right. So um, do you want to walk up? Sweet, yeah, or here. They've okay. done some lovely restoration on their buildings, a chicken farm. They've restored an outbuilding okay. that's just kind of a little a little retreat center. And yep. they're just doing really great things out here. So do you two want to guide us? So yeah. other, this farm is, was built in 1910. Most 1910, okay. 1914-ish. Okay. So Pre-depression. Uh, yeah, and all the buildings are original except the greenhouse and my little garden shed. Um, a little garden shed. <laughs> <laughs> the little garden shed is on a farm, it's small, but... <laughs> um, so we have the chicken coop, which is just a darling building with clear story windows, and it's just really well sited for chickens. I have my chickens closed because of the bird flu, so they're okay. in there. Yeah, um, yeah. That shed was like the pig barn, and so the chicken coop. Okay. It, last, the last people here had horses and turned it into a loafing shed. Our goats and donkeys are in there. This Let's is keep the walking. barn. Okay. Let's keep walking. Yep. And, um, this is where we started the show. Yeah, <laughs> that's the stage. It's kind of a mess right now. But the um, half by half the barn is actually barn. And then this half is public restroom, huge okay. commercial kitchen, the mead room that's in construction, um, and the chocolate making room, mead making room. Yep. This wonderful. The greenery is becoming my studio. Yeah, I remember walking in here a couple years ago. Yes, yeah, so. It's a store. Yep. But 
Now I have a big sale going on in the greenhouse to get rid of all the store stuff so that I can just make art and not spend so okay, much ready time. Okay, we'll wrap up here. Store. So, and then down here is our garden, which is where we're chomping at the bit to get planting one of these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we probably should have gotten all of our seeds and everything in before this rain came with the warm weather. We would have had really quick germination. Yep. I didn't quite get my seeds in yesterday morning before the rain came. I got my coffee ground yeah. spread on my mulch though. And then I so got in trouble good. because I didn't uncover my yeah, I potted it seeds. Yeah, so yeah. All right, well, um, with that... Oh, yep, what, go ahead. Oh, then go ahead, our add. greenhouse over there is where our big sale will be this weekend. And everyone's welcome to come. It's tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday from 10 to 5. And uh, it's chock full of vintage and eclectic treasures. So, so awesome. if you go to their Facebook or their, um, if you go to their web page, you'll find out about the events. I mean, generally, it's the Sunday event, right, where you're doing the right. music and the, and the pizza. Starting Memorial Day weekend. Starting Memorial Day weekend. So um, we'll be looking for that at the end of May when weather's really nice. And then you have events throughout the year that are special, maybe other times of the week, right? Yep, art Susan? fairs, theater, and, right. sometimes things like improv, all kinds of fun improv. stuff. Improv. Improv. Isn't that what we do all the time? I think, I think so. I think so. All right. Well, so, with that. So with that... Rock your day, everybody, and um, consider coming out to help us plant. Please let us know because we want to know how many people. Yeah, how the, many people? How many, how many people? This is a how weapon. many people this are going to be weapon. using the pitchfork? <laughs> yeah. Dividing fork this time, not a pitchfork because we're not pitching anything. We're just dividing things and digging holes. So we hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, who knows what will be next week? I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're still. Kelly is liking road trips, and I don't know. Road this trips. <laughs> so, road trips. So maybe we'll be doing more road trips. Okay, All so right. thank you, Susan and Roger. Thank you. Thank Good you very night. much. Everybody, rock your day. Rock your day. Bye-bye. Okay. Is it off?